people let's go ahead and move to the next chapter now please come to the next chart everyone please come to the next chart the next chart which is there the next chapter which is there basically is on custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty or concessional rate of duty or for specified end use people listen to me very carefully everyone over here now the custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty this is an amended completely chapter which has been amended now and hence we are going to understand the customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or specified end use 2022 everyone over here now this chapter people what are we going to understand now everyone customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or specified end use the name of this rule actually what happened these rules had been introduced earlier in 1996 okay after that they went ahead and made lot of changes there were some provisions which were there creating industry may problem industry requested then baba 2016 may some amendment was done okay then what happened 2017 may again some amendment was done then after that again some provisions were required that sir if you are importing the goods we are want to send it for job work capital goods we want to capital goods were imported at concessional rate of duty and then we wanted to clear it so clear it in the domestic tariff area so again some amendment was required and again they went ahead and amended 2021 may and now again they have gone ahead and inserted the word for specified end use and they have amended again in 2022 in my opinion for exam this time they should go ahead and ask a three mark question let's go ahead and start understanding now custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use rule 2022 now first first question which a student when he reads these rules he asks me sir where is this chapter in our textbook it is not there ca final ka when you go ahead and open your textbook ca final ka textbook ka chapter number one which is there when you open you will find these rules in chapter number one okay but i go ahead and teach is a teach these rules as a whole chapter all together are we clear everyone very very important this time for your exam purpose let's go ahead and understand custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty rules 2022 or for specified end use 2022 everyone listen to me very carefully very simple thought is there of the government if you can understand that thought you will understand these rules easily everyone chapter number 10 it is custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty or specified end use igc rs it will be actually igcrs rules import of goods at concessional rate of duty or specified end use rules 2022 everyone listen to me very carefully now sir supposingly you know what you are going to make now government is trying to promote what make in india correct or not government always wants that you make in india and you go ahead and use it in india or export but government wants you to Baba government says Atmanirbhar Bharat. What is Atmanirbhar? That you should be self-dependent. You should manufacture in India. Yes or no, everyone? Government wants you to do manufacturing in India. And that has been the goal of the government since ever. So government goes ahead and says that people, earlier these rules were introduced this way. That sir, you do one thing. If you go ahead, for an example, government wants to promote manufacturing of mobile phones in India. Yes or no, everyone? Why import mobile phones? Make in India, correct? So, government has gone ahead and told that if you are a manufacturer, people, this was rules which were introduced for whom? Manufacturer. And government told if you are a manufacturer, if you go ahead and import, supposingly, you are a manufacturer of mobile phone. Okay, everyone? And if you go ahead and import, supposingly, if you go ahead and import mobile phone related parts, we will allow you to clear these parts from the custom port at concessional rate of duty if the end use is mobile phone. 
if you are going to ultimately manufacture and use it in the mobile phone then we will go ahead and allow you to import might be aluminium you want to make mobile phone can you aluminium you want you want parts of the mobile phone you want any specific electronic item if you want to import you want to use it for the mobile phone then if the end use is mobile phone so government issues notification government will issue a notification saying from today if anyone is going ahead and making mobile phone and if you go ahead and import the parts or any item for using it in mobile phone not any other item might be you imported it for mobile phone and you started using it for something else then government says if the end use is mobile phone then I will go ahead and give a concessional rate of duty. When you import, instead of paying 20%, you can pay only 10% and 10% will be concession which will be given to you. But why is the concession given everyone? So that you use it in the making of mobile phone. But you know what? People import iron, steel, aluminium, might be mobile phone ka parts and ultimately they don't go ahead and use it for mobile phone. They start using it for something else. So government told we want to ensure people we want to ensure that once we go ahead and clear it at concessional rate of duty for you you go ahead and use it for mobile phone only and hence lot of controls had been told and that is the control basically government has gone ahead and told you to maintain lot of books of accounts etc and that is the control so government tells this manufacturer hey you have to maintain records this 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 you have to go ahead and produce the records on demand and sir you have to file one monthly report in IGCR3 monthly statement has to be filed where you have to tell us what did you do with the goods did you send the goods for any job work did you go ahead and send it from one unit to another unit lot of control is being implemented by the government to ensure the end use is as it was told in the exemption notification are we clear everyone so this is con import of goods at concessional rate of duty now later what happened people government was not allowing people to send the goods for job work so i went ahead and imported supposedly mobile phone parts i am or might be i went ahead and imported for an example you think cloth cloth say if the end use is told baba i'm not talking about specific exemption notification for an example there is an exemption notification which says if you import cloth and you make shirt if you import cloth and you make shirt then if the end use is shirt then we will go ahead and give you concessional rate of duty now you cleared the cloth after that you made shirt you did not make shirt how will the government come to know so government implements lot of control through the igcr they tell you to maintain books of account they tell you books of account should be given to us whenever we demand they tell you that you have to go ahead and file monthly statement monthly return has to be filed to tell us what are you doing with the goods what are the goods you have used it etc and when you go ahead and import a concessional rate of duty here they also take a bond from you that sir if you by chance violate the provision if you don't go ahead and use it to make ultimately mobile phone we will go ahead and take from you whatever concession was given if you don't pay we will invoke the bond plus bank guarantee and release our amount did you guys get the thought of the government so igcr rules are implemented not for giving only concession but at the to ensure that the end use is ultimately what they had told people i'll go ahead and tell you now the scope kept on increasing now i went ahead and imported clothes and i want to send it for job work i went ahead and imported some machine and machine i went ahead and used it for making shirt now i want to clear in the domestic tariff area specified end use is done then what to do Sir, how to clear the machine in the domestic tariff area? How much duty we have to pay? Sir, if you want to send the goods for job work, can we go ahead and send? Because you are implementing control on us. What if we want to send it for job work? How to send it for job work? Sir, we want to transfer from one unit to another unit so that another processing can be done. How can we transfer from one unit to another? All these things government went ahead and told when you want to send for job work how to send when you want to transfer from one unit to another unit how you can go ahead and you transfer all these things are told now sir when you these rules were made these rules were made for manufacturing but slowly we told sir i am a teacher i went to import ipad and ipad pay everyone i told for an example i am telling so government went ahead and told okay if you are a service provider people if you are a service provider if you go ahead and supposingly i told sir i want an ipad to teach for an example there is an exemption notification which says says that teacher when they go ahead and import 
iPad and they go ahead. If teacher imports iPad and they use it for teaching, they will get concessional rate of duty. So I went ahead and imported an iPad and everyone, when I went ahead and imported an iPad, the rate of duty was 28% on iPad, custom duty. Sir, I went ahead and paid only 10%. How much concession was given to me? 18%. This concession was given on what thought? That you will go ahead and use it for providing service or might be you are going ahead and using for providing export of service. Government wants to earn foreign currency. So, might be you are using it for earning export uh, services you are going ahead and doing or you are doing services within India only. So, sir, I will get concessional rate of duty. But how will government implement control through IGCR rules? They are going ahead and implementing control to ensure that the end use is as told in the notification. So, for manufacturer also it is there, for service provider also it is there and now they have told if you go ahead and import something and you supply for specified end use, what is the specified end use which will be specified in the exemption notification. I will tell you what do they mean by specified end use. Everyone over here, for an example, government went ahead and told Ramesh, you go ahead and import mobile phone car parts. Okay, everyone, and these parts, who is going ahead and importing? I am going ahead and importing. And if I go ahead and supply this mobile phone car part, supposedly, I am not the manufacturer, everyone, but I am supplying it to mobile phone car manufacturer who are making what? So, end use, specified end use is what? The exemption notification says, if you go ahead and import mobile phone car parts and supply it for specified end use, which is for using in mobile phone, then also you can go ahead and claim concessional rate of duty. And this is the new amendment, which they have gone ahead and told, Ramesh, you imported parts. Parts pay actually rate of duty is 30%, but you will be paying only concessional rate of duty might be 5%. And why is the concession given 25%? Because the exemption notification says that if you import mobile phone car parts and you supply it for what? Specified end use which is making of what? Mobile phone. The end use will be told in the notification. If you supply it for specified end use, then Ramesh, you will get concessional rate of duty. Now, people, custom officer sitting at the port will clear your goods at how much? 5%. But he has to ensure no, that you actually go ahead and use it for what? Specified end use. You are going ahead and using it for manufacturing. You are using it for service providing or you are using it for specified end use as told in the exemption. If that's all everyone, we are going to learn over here how to go ahead and import the goods at concessional rate of duty and after we go ahead and import people, after we go ahead and import, what are the various controls which will be implemented on us? Did you guys understand everyone? What is the thought of the government? Now, this specified end use ke liye also, this exemption notification has been. For an example, everyone. Now, for an example, to make these books, to make these books, everyone, paper is required. Okay? Now, I went ahead and imported paper. It is told that any person who is going ahead and making, for an example, one notification has come that, sir, to make books, whoever is importing paper and making, printing books out of it will get concessional rate of duty. I imported paper and I am a service provider teacher, but I printed the books and I got concessional rate of duty. Now, sometimes it happens that a paper importer does not go ahead and use it for himself. He supplies it to other people. So, if there is an exemption notification which has come and it says, not manufacturer, but if you are supplying it for people who are making magazines out of it, then there is a concessional rate of duty which will be allowed to you. So, I can go ahead and import paper and supply it for specified end use which is for making of the magazine and then also I can avail concessional rate of duty. So, even if you are a manufacturer or you are a service provider yourself or even if you are supplying for specified end use, then also you will get concessional rate of duty is the thought of the exemption, is the thought of concessional rate of duty and specified end use rules clear to all of you. Now, let us go ahead and understand everyone how we can go ahead and import at concessional duty, rate of duty, when is the bond to be given, what is the various returns to be filed, etc. Can we go ahead everyone? People, please come to your chart. Very, very interesting. Everyone over here now. See, 
supposingly you are an importer you are the importer people you are the importer what are you ultimately going to do you as an importer what are you ultimately going to do use for specified end use either you will do manufacturing or you might be a service provider or you will go ahead and supply it for what specified end use so papa people everyone whenever an importer listen first of all when do i have to go ahead and follow these rules when do you have to follow custom import of goods at concessional date of duty rules when do you have to follow so for an example government issued one exemption notification and government wrote in the exemption notification that from today whoever is importing paper instead of rate of duty 25% only 5% concessional rate of duty has to be paid and how much concession will be given 20% government told the exemption notification issued but then if exemption notification is issued like this then custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty not to be followed if at the end they mention that sir this exemption is subject to igcr rules then you will get the exemption you will get the 20% ka concession only if you follow the rules means only if a exemption notification is issued by the government then baba it is normal but if the exemption notification may they specifically told that igcr rules has to be observed means you have to follow the igcr rules only then the igcr rules are applicable otherwise to government told 25% is the duty on paper 5% will be applicable 20% will be concession then you can take aram se concession no problem but in the exemption notification at the end it has to be told that sir igcr rules has to be observed then only you have to follow the igcr rules which you are going to learn now otherwise i will import pay 5% duty and clear the goods that's it are we clear everyone so the first first line says says over here rules will apply only to a notification which provides for observance of this rules only in this notification if it is specifically told that you have to observe the rules then you observe the rules then b says an importer who can avail the benefit everyone these rules are applicable for whom an importer who wants to avail the benefit of any notification and such benefit baba the notification ka benefit is what dependent upon the use of the imported goods being covered by that notification for the manufacturing of any commodity people you want to import the goods which are for manufacturing or for providing of output service or being put to end use they are going ahead and telling for an example we will go ahead and take the example as mobile phone ka parts everyone full examples will take with mobile phone ka parts only government had gone ahead and issued an exemption notification where government told igcr rules to be followed theek hai and the exemption notification told that if you go ahead and import mobile phone ka parts then sir rate of duty is 30% actually but we will go ahead and give you a concession of 20% and you have to pay only so if i go ahead and import mobile phone ka parts then the custom officer will go ahead and allow me to clear the goods at how much 10% only provided the end use is for mobile phone or i am going ahead and supplying it to someone who is going ahead and using it for specified end use which is basically mobile phone can i go ahead everyone so these rules are now extended to manufacturers service providers and also if you are supplying it for the specified end use which is told in the exemption notification can i go ahead everyone so every exemption notification ke liye igcr rules are not required the exemption notification which specifically says that you have to follow igcr rules only that exemption notification ke liye you have to follow igcr rules and what is the igcr rules everyone let's go ahead and understand people listen to me very carefully if there is an exemption notification which says you can import parts of mobile phone and use it to make mobile and you you will have you will get a concession of 20% and you have to pay only 10% rate of duty then first if you want to go ahead and avail the benefit of the exemption notification first step number 1 you have to go to the icegate ka website which is the common portal icegate.gov.in and you have to provide one time information one time information that you know what people listen you have to tell the government sir who am i what are the goods i am going to make or what is the 
सर्विस आई एम गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड और वट इज द स्पेसिफाइड एंड यूज for which i am going to supply this goods who will be my job worker what are my various interest inter what are my various different inter units you have to go ahead and tell sir which is the port where i am going to do the import this much you have to inform to the officer this will be a one time information a person who wants to follow what igcr rules has to go online and fill the form and when he goes ahead and fills the form the form will contain the name of the importer and his job worker people after i go ahead and import some things might be i have to send it for job work so i need to inform about my job worker also the goods which i am going to produce the process which will be undertaken at the manufacturing facility of the importer or the job worker if i don't if i have a job worker both ka facility my manufacturing facility his manufacturing facility sir i will import jeans pant ka cloth Clothes. Say if you make jeans pant, you are given concessional rate of duty. For an example, so sir, I will import the clothes. Clothes, I will send it for job work. Job worker do will do some work. Then it will come back to me. I will do some work. Are you guys able to understand? So you have to inform what is the manufacturing facility. May you are going to do? Can we go ahead, everyone? Then, then it says the nature and description of imported goods. What is the goods you want to import, sir? Mobile phone ka parts I want to import. Used in the manufacture of goods. at the premises of the importer or job worker what is the nature of the what is the nature and description of goods you need at your premises or job worker premises to do the manufacturing then the particulars of the exemption notification applicable on such import sir see this was the exemption notification you have to tell that also theek hai then the nature of output service if you are a service provider and you have gone ahead and imported something then you have to inform sir i am a teacher teaching and if i i want to imp import an ipad or might be i want to import a teaching screen are you guys able to understand sir if you are a service provider inform about the output service rendered utilizing the imported goods and particulars of the premises intended to be used in case of inter unit transfer sir which is when i want to transfer from one unit sir i am not doing manufacturing only in one unit i have two three units which are there from here to here if you want to send you have to inform about the other unit also then details people see how much control government is implementing on you your job worker your other units also so that they can make sure that the end use is actually what was told in the exemption notification otherwise people will go ahead and import something and use it for something else then government will have a loss are you guys able to understand government basically wants to encourage manufacturing service providing government is trying to encourage that even if you are going ahead and supplying it to someone who is going to use it the specified end use basically the sector which government wants to promote government will tell mobile phone ka sector we want to promote so if you go ahead and import parts and you supply it for making a mobile phone you will get concessional rate of duty i can also get concessional rate of and people tell me if i am paying concessional rate of duty ultimately to the manufacturer also i'll supply it less duty baba custom duty is indirect tax ultimately to him less duty will be charged so ultimately for him the benefit manufacturing of the mobile phone will become cheaper can i go ahead everyone everyone over here details of end use recipient means if i am not going to use it who will be the end use recipient whom ultimately i'll be going ahead and supplying if imported goods supplied for specified end use and the intended port of import where you want to go ahead and import importer has to go ahead and give first of all one time information this is known as one time information are we clear everyone whenever you want to follow custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty means there is an exemption notification which says you have to follow concessional rate of duty ke liye this notification says you have to observe IC, igcr rules then if you want to avail the benefit of the exemption notification then you have to go online and give one time information okay everyone when you give the one time information the in the igcr form number 1 then they will go ahead and ice gate ka website mein the officer who is there he will go ahead and check the details and he will go ahead and accept once he goes ahead and accept then he will give you iin number iin number which is import of goods at concessional rate identification number shall be generated iin means import of goods at concessional rate identification number means your identity will be fixed first of all are we clear with this okay that you are people 
you have told the department that sir i am this person this i do and this is my job worker this is my inter unit where i want to transfer and this is the end use which is going to be you have informed everything are we clear now let's go ahead first step done everyone now there is second step where you will have to go ahead and give one bond to your jurisdictional assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner your jurisdiction people might be your importing at kerala port but you are in mumbai your manufacturing facility is in mumbai on you who is having the jurisdiction that jurisdictional assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner ko you have to go ahead and give one bond for an example you, he will go you he will ask you ramesh how much rupees ka parts you want to import over a period of year one year ke liye how much parts you want to import i will go ahead and say sir 100 crore rupees ka parts i want to import he will tell you ramesh what is the duty actually sir 20% duty means 20 crore is the duty which should come ramesh okay what is the exemption notification telling sir exemption notification is telling that i will be exempted from 15% duty exempted means i don't have to pay how much 15 crore and ultimately i have to pay only 5 crore you know what he will tell you he will tell this 15 crore we have given you exemption right what if you don't use the end use for what was told do one thing give a 15 crore ka bond bond along with the bond he will tell what bond what will we do you will give on a stamp paper along with the bond we want a back guarantee Are we clear, everyone? Can I go ahead? So they will go ahead and take a bond from you, and now they will open one bond account for you. People, listen. They will account open a bond ka account for you, where they will credit fifteen crore rupees is the concession allowed to this guy. Means maximum concession that can be allowed to me is how much, everyone? Fifteen crore. Bum means fifteen crore is the maximum concession that I can go ahead and. can i go ahead everyone now people listen to me very carefully is the second point clear to all of you it says jurisdictional acdc bond with surety and security has to be given as deemed appropriate by the ac or pc theek hai everyone whatever he is going ahead and telling you basically he will do the calculation how i have gone ahead and told you can i go ahead now what will happen third step please go ahead and import your goods for an example mobile phone ka parts have come aha mobile phone parts have come people tell me one thing your parts have reached kerala port what will you do let it rot over there only or you will go to clear to clear the goods what will you do you have to go ahead and file one bill of entry and along with that in the bill of entry you should mention your iin number baba that sir i have already gone ahead and given information that i will be importing such goods your iin number has to be mentioned people did you understand to clear your goods you will file bill of entry you will mention the iin number where is the iin number which was given at the time of registration and also the bond which i told you baba you have given a continuity bond no what do you mean by a continuity bond which will run over a period of one year means we have gone ahead and taken a bond thinking that over a period of one year you will go ahead and import for 100 crore sir for 100 crore what is the concession they are allowing 15 crore and 15 crore ka one bond they will take from you are we clear everyone now listen to me very carefully you have to inform about the bond number also plus you have to do the self assessment see how much duty i have to pay everyone 5% so for an example this was the total imports which i am going to do in a year for an example so total imports i am going to do in a year approximately 100 crore 100 crore ke liye i have given that concession i will be availing over a period of one year or six month i will be availing 15 crore ka concession now for an example i went ahead and imported the goods worth 10 crore only 10 crore pe 20% duty was how much everyone 2 crore how much is the concession 1.5 crore so ultimately can we tell me how much duty i have to pay 50 lakhs so i will have to go ahead and make the self assessment 5% pay and i'll have to pay the duty of 50 lakh are we clear everyone people listen to me very carefully i will go online to the ice gate ka website now file my bill of entry mention by iin number continuity bond number do the self assessment pay the duty go to the custom port now the custom port may see my jurisdictional officer is supposingly my office is in mumbai so my mumbai office ka officer now the kerala port which is there kerala port mein my goods have come to so, kerala port ka ac or dc now fifth point may see fourth point may i file the bill of entry fifth point may he will allow me the benefit of notification and issue the clearance order for home consumption and he'll tell okay you have paid 50 lakh very good how much is the concession everyone 1.5 crore no this import ke liye people 
100 crore was the total year ka import. This import happened for only 10 crore. So, Baba, he will go ahead and tell me, Ramesh, 10 crore ka import pe, how much concession given? So, he will go ahead and debit from here 1.5 crore and they will tell me your balance is only means over a period of one year. Now, you can get more concession how much? 13.5 crore. Are you guys able to understand? Can we go ahead? So, first they have taken a bond from you, a continuity bond. That sir, every time you import, don't give a bond. You give a continuity bond might be for six months or one year. Did you guys get the thought everyone? See over here, now what will happen? Fifth step may he allowed you to clear the goods. Sixth step. 5A step means along with the fifth step only this step will come wherein what will happen once bill of entry is cleared by the custom officer he will go ahead bond will be debited means at, at this stage only this is going to happen immediately what will happen bond will get debited automatically in the custom automated system and the details will be made available to your jurisdictional custom officer. Are we clear everyone? Your jurisdictional custom officer will immediately come to know. Oh, okay. Ramesh ka 15 crore ka bond se 1.5 crore ka concession given and remaining bond balance is how much everyone? 13.5 crore. Is my point clear to all? Now what will you do? You will take your goods and come to your factory. Is my point? People, anything any difficult? Nothing. Sir, if there is an exemption notification which says you have to follow IGCR rule. I went online, filled what? IGCR 1, one time information given, I, IN number given. Now I went ahead and imported. After I imported, I have to file bill of entry and pay the duty which is concessional rate of duty. I have to mention my IN number plus go ahead and mention my bond ka number also because I have given my bond to my jurisdictional custom officer. Are we clear everyone? Now, the custom officer at the port will go ahead and allow me to clear the goods because in his online, he will be able to see with my IN number that, okay, this guy is already gone ahead and he has told that he wants to clear the goods at concessional date of duty. This person will be able to see online and he will allow me to clear the goods and get home. When I clear the goods and get home, the bond will get automatically debited with the amount of concession that is allowed. People over here now, listen. My goods have come to my to my premises. What is the work I have to do? Go ahead and do. Now, sixth step, seventh step is that, sir, you should always maintain accounts. Seventh step is what, everyone? You should always maintain accounts and bill of entry wise. Every bill of entry wise, sir, this much goods had come. This much I used it. This much I have sent for job work. This much I have gone ahead and sent it for my uh, inter-unit. From one unit to another unit, all these things. Sir, bill of entry wise, clearly indicating the quantity, value of the goods imported, the date of the receipt of the goods in the premises. Sir, then, number one, clearly indicating the quantity and the value. Clearly indicating what? The quantity and the date of receipt of goods in the premises. The quantity of goods. People, this quantity is common, okay? The quantity of goods consumed, the quantity of goods sent for job work, nature of job work carried out, the quantity of goods received after you have sent for job work, job work was done and you have received it. Sir, the quantity of goods re-exported, oh, if the goods, if any, sir, the goods which had come, no, they were defective. Then I went ahead and re-exported. When you re-export, people, you have to maintain that details also and whatever is remaining, the quantity which is remaining in your stock. So, people, listen, the quantity and value of the imported goods, the quantity and the date of receipt, the quantity of goods consumed, the quantity of goods sent for job work, the quantity of goods received, the quantity of goods re-exported and the quantity remaining in stock and it should be produced to the jurisdictional AC or DC on demand. Whenever the jurisdictional AC or DC is demanding, you have to go ahead and produce this account. Is my point clear to all? Can we go ahead, everyone? The next one, everyone over here, remember one thing. Whenever, whenever people, I went ahead and imported 1,000, supposedly, I imported, for an example, 100 units of a parts and I have received only 90 units. 10 units which are shortfall, no? I have to go ahead and immediately inform any sort received or non-receipt intimate in the portal in IGCR form number 2. Because people listen, 
I imported 100. Department knows I have imported 100 units, but I have received only 90. Then 10 units will always be a problem. How do I go ahead and justify that 10 units? So if you go ahead and receive something short, immediately you should go ahead and inform in IGCR 2. So IGCR 1, one-time information. IGCR 2, non-receipt of goods. Are we clear? Now what will you do? Now comes IGCR 3. People, all this. You, every month, this much goods I have sent for job work, this much I have transferred inter unit. Whatever you do, you have to go ahead and inform in IGC R3, which is your monthly report. Everyone over here now. Now, people, everyone over here, whatever the imported goods are there, what do you do with the goods? You have to go ahead and inform to the government, submit monthly report. One minute, everyone. Submit monthly statement on the portal in IGC R3. People, don't you think government is implementing control on you? So that they ensure that every goods you are sending for job work, you are going ahead and sending it for specified end use. Sir, I send it for job work. Maintain. Inform in the IGC R3. You are sending it for inter-unit. Tell me. Sir, you are sending it for specified end use to someone else. Tell me. Everything has to be informed. Everyone, you have to submit one monthly statement on the portal IGCR 3 by what date? 10th of the next month. So every month, why, month you have to go ahead and submit this statement and the importer may submit the details of the goods consumed in IGCR 3 anytime. Okay, I'll tell you. Everyone, for recredit of the bond. Listen, I went ahead and imported. People listen to me very carefully. For an example, when I imported, I had given a bond of 2 crore rupees and I have already utilized my bond of 2 crore. How much is the balance? Zero. Now, you know what happened? I had got a concession of 2 crore. 2 crore ka bond was given. Bond was debited with 2 crore. The raw material which I got, no, raw material I went ahead and used for my intended purpose. I have used it for the intended purpose. If I have gone ahead and used it to make mobile phone, have I done the purpose? If you have done what was told in the notification, very good. Now, just go online and inform to the officer in IGCR 3A, your bond. Up immediately, what will happen? They will remove this. Basically, they will recredit 2 crore rupees in your account. Now, you can go ahead and import again and you can get a concession off because it's a continuity bond. You're getting my point, everyone. Can I go ahead? Everyone over here now. So, what is your monthly statement first of all? IGCR 3. And can you tell me if you want any recredit in the bond account, what do you have to do? You have to file IGCR 3 and it can be filed anytime. Can we go ahead everyone? Everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. Sir, goods have come to my premises. What can I do? Please use it. If used, ninth point everyone, if you use for the manufacture, or providing of service or can you tell me everyone supplied for specified end use means you sold it supposingly you imported parts of mobile phone you sold it to manufacturer of mobile phone baba then if you have gone ahead and supplied for specified end use whatever was specified in the notification very good very good you can go ahead and now tell the government and government will go ahead and recredit the amount in your igc uh, you can apply in IGCR 3A and government will recreate the amount in your bond account. Is my point sharp clear to all? People, are you going able to visualize everything? Now, sir, the goods which came, I, I don't want to use it. Sir, I want to re-export it. You get an option. Sir, you, you know what? I had got the parts that ultimately I'll make mobile phone. But sir, now I'm thinking I will not make it. Or might be the parts which came are defective. Then you have an option to re-export also. People over here, see nine step is imported goods. You can use it for the specified purpose. If you use it, very good. No penalty, nothing. Very good. You have followed the notification. But if you don't use it, you can go ahead and nine step. People, nine step is what? Either you use it. Or you go ahead and re-export people, you can re-export the unutilized or defective goods within a period specified in the notification that is basically six months from the date of import. When you imported, you got a clearance order from that day, you should re-export within how much time? Six months where time is not 
specified either you should export within the specified time if in the notification it was told any goods imported at concessional rate of duty should be exported in three months you have to export only in three months the export if you don't use it send it outside if it defective send it outside within how much time time told in the notification otherwise maximum time is how much six months and this six months can be further extended by the jurisdictional commissioner on sufficient cause by how much three months but people six months plus three months may if you don't go ahead and re-export then what no option to re-export use it for your specified purpose if you don't use it you can also go ahead and clear it within india people tell me one thing if you clear within india how much concession was given when you imported 2 crore may you paid only 50 lakh 1.5 crore ka concession was given the date of clearance order say till the day you pay the duty on the 1.5 crore you have to pay 1.5 crore now why you did not use it you did not re-export also that 1.5 crore what basically might be only little goods you entered and cleared in india whatever you goods you cleared in india what was the concession given 15 percent that 15 percent that concessional rate of duty you have to go ahead and pay to the government along with interest at the rate of 15 percent from the date sir pay the in applicable duty if you clear unutilized goods or defective goods see nine months may you can re-export if you don't re-export then you can clear within india and you have to give these details in your monthly statement and people for an example all the goods i cleared in india only i did not use it for the end use i told sir i will go ahead and use it for something else then what to do you have to pay 1.5 crore ka concession which was given along with interest at the rate of 15 percent the day you had cleared the goods you had filed the bill of entry you should have paid that 1.5 crore you were given concession that time till today when you pay the duty you have to pay interest at the rate of 15 percent is my point sharp clear to all can i go ahead baba interesting rules nothing very difficult about it very interesting everyone over here now listen record the details of necessary export document in the monthly if you re-export please tell in your monthly statement can i go ahead if you clear within domestic tariff area please tell in your monthly statement actually when you go to the igcr uh, when you go to the online portal of ice gate that igcr that uh, form which is there igcr3 will have lot of tabs what you have sent for job work what you have sent for inter unit what you have gone ahead and re-exported what you have gone ahead and cleared in india all the details you have to go ahead and mention what are the goods you have sent for specified and use to whom all these details you have to go ahead and mention in the igcr3 re-export value people listen you imported you spend hundred dollar you are going hundred dollar spent when you re-export, the value of the goods is only $90. People listen to me very carefully. Re-export value shall not be less than the value of the goods at the time of import. They are going ahead and telling, might be, when you imported, you had spent $100. When you are exporting, the value should not fall. It should not become less. That's all. Because when you imported, you have spent $100. When you are re-exporting, they are going ahead and telling, the value should not go ahead and fall down. Can I go ahead everyone, everyone over here now, is the point sharp clear to all, people listen to me very carefully, my goods have come to my premises, can I send it for job work, yes, let's go ahead and understand rule number 7, people the above which I had gone ahead and explained to you, many rules have combined and I have explained it to you, can I go ahead everyone, sir I want to go ahead and send the goods for supposedly job work, how do I send it, people listen, raise the invoice, GST, invoice or delivery chalan and you need a e-way bill. Everyone over here, I imported inputs and I cleared it at concessional rate of duty. Now, people, I received it in my premises. Can I send it for job work? Yes, sir. You can send it for job work. See, everyone, just maintain. Who will maintain? Number one, the boss. You remember the boss in GST days? This boss who is there, he will maintain. So here it says, what do you mean by job work? People, can you tell me what is job work? Any treatment or process on another person's goods is job work. But they have gone ahead and told over here, any treatment or process on manufacturing consistent with the exemption notification undertaken by a person on goods belonging to the importer. So my goods, whoever is going ahead 
and undertaking the work, he will be called as what? Above. Job worker means he will do treatment or process on my goods. But you know what? Job work ke liye, if you are the importer, you can't send gold, etc. It is told over here, except gold, jewelry, articles thereof, other precious metals or stone. So people, manufacturer, supposedly I imported goods, which is gold at concessional date of duty. I told I will make jewelry and government has gone ahead and given some concessional date of duty. If you import gold and you go ahead and make ultimately what? Jewelry. Now you can't send the gold to your job worker that is not permitted. Can we go ahead everyone? Everyone over here now. So other than gold, you think supposedly I imported some item and out of the item I want to go ahead might be cloth I imported I want to get shirt manufactured and I have sent it to home my job worker how will I go ahead and send number one I should maintain the record of the goods which are sent for job work and I should mention in the monthly statement which is IGCR 3 simple that monthly statement may you should mention number two when you are sending it for job work you should send it under the cover of an invoice if invoice is applicable under the cover of a invoice and wherever applicable e way bill so people invoice and e way bill or might be only delivery chalan plus e way bill and you can send it for what everyone job work and e way bill has to be raised as per are gst me how e way bill we are going to in GST, we raise EV bill. So, please raise the EV bill. Sir, how will we raise the invoice? Beta, invoice or delivery chalan. I have already told you how it is to be done in GST. Can I go ahead, everyone? Sir, invoicing provisions are applicable on me. Beta, raise invoice. But actually, when you are sending it for job work, you don't raise invoice. You raise what? Delivery chalan plus EV bill. Can I go ahead? And you should always mention the description and the quantity. You should always specify in your Basically, delivery chalan that, sir, yeah, I am going ahead and sending. Or when you are sending to EVA bill, you should just go ahead and mention. You should mention what, everyone? What is the quantity of goods I am sending it for? Job work. Can I go ahead, everyone? And now, job worker will do what? Job work. He will keep your goods ready. People, in GST, we had learned that from job worker's premises, you can supply what? You can supply it directly to your buyer. Here, they have not gone ahead and told anything like that. Here, you should get your goods back. People, get your goods back within six months from the date of invoice or the EV bill. Basically, when you are sending it for job work, you will have a delivery salon plus EV bill. From that date, you should get it back within six months. People, invoice is generally not made when you are sending the goods for job work. Are we clear? People who went ahead and made the IGCR rule. Might be by mistake they have gone ahead and told it. In my opinion, here it should have been delivery chalan. Can I go ahead, everyone? Are we clear till here? Can we go ahead? And hence, sir, once the job worker does the job work, job worker also should maintain people accounts of receipt of goods, manufacturing process undertaken, waste which was generated, if any, and produce the accounts or detail before the jurisdictional custom officer whenever it is demanded and post completion, people. First of all, he should maintain the accounts of what are the goods he has gone ahead and done the, what is the manufacturing he has gone ahead and undertaken and he should maintain a record of the what was the waste which was generated. Secondly, he should go ahead and give the accounts to whom? Jurisdictional officer whenever he is going ahead and asking and thirdly, post completion of job work, send the goods back to the importer or another job worker. They have not told you can supply from his premises but you can send to another job worker as directed by the importer for carrying out the remaining process under the cover of an invoice or an e-way bill. Basically, it will go along with delivery chalan and a e-way bill. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Everyone, number one. What is the exam question? What is the process of sending the goods for job work? Baba, first you have to maintain your records and you should also go ahead and tell about this detail in your IGCR 3. The goods will go to the job worker along with an invoice or EV bill. Loss is invoice or EV bill. But actual practically you have to understand that it should be delivery chalan and EV bill. Can I go ahead? But don't go ahead and mention this in your exam. Exam you should say what is the rule telling? That it should go along with invoice or EV bill. I have not told and and all. Or EV bill. Can I go ahead everyone? And number three, job worker should maintain a record of the manufacturing process he has undertaken. What is the waste which is generated? He should go ahead and give the details to the jurisdictional officer whenever he is requesting. And the last, he should send the goods to another job worker or send it back. Within how much time everyone? 
सर एक्चुअली इन जीएसटी द टाइम लिमिट इज वन ईयर दिस कस्टम्स का रूल्स आर नॉट इन parallel with the gst they will amend it slowly can i go ahead everyone they have made the law mistakes will be amended in my opinion it should be in parallel with gst they should allow one year ka time we'll see we'll see on a future course of time what will happen can we go ahead everyone everyone over here now now the goods have come back thirdly you should get the goods back always remember boss if goods are not used as per job work particulars if you don't use the goods as per the job work particulars jurisdictional custom officer shall take action against the importer under rule number 11 and 12 which i'll be teaching you later basically they will go ahead and penalize you and that penalty provision etc is told in rule number 11 and 12 is my job work ke liye when you are sending the goods that process clear to all of you same process is when you are sending your goods for inter unit you tell me everyone whenever you are sending for inter unit maintain your accounts inform in the igcr 3 once the goods you are sending you should send under the cover of a eva bill once the goods ka inter unit when you have sent from one unit to another for processing processing is done get it back or from the inter unit you can send it for job work also and when you are sending it to another unit for inter unit transfer why are you doing inter unit so that further processing can be done so baba let him go ahead and maintain the accounts and what's is my point clear to all let's understand people procedure for allowing imported goods for inter unit listen to me very carefully you went ahead and got the imports you cleared it at custom concessional rate of dt this is unit a and this is your another unit theek hai everyone unit b which is there number 1 you should maintain the records of the goods sent for unit transfer during the month you should first maintain the records boss should maintain the record and mention the same in the monthly statement igcr 3 next now once the goods have reached the inter unit number 2 when you are sending it please send along with in people when you are sending it to your inter unit within the state are you selling it you are not selling it so you might go ahead and use your delivery chalan and eva bill but sir the law in custom says what invoice or wherever applicable eva bill and baba specify the description and quantity people you have to understand one thing the custom officers or the custom law when it is made those people might not be a very big expert in gst so there can be small small error which can be there it must be an error there they should have mentioned whatever is the appropriate document plus the eva bill so appropriate document would have been what delivery chalan plus the eva bill can i go ahead everyone but for your exam as of now you have to say you are sending it invoice or eva bill now once the goods have reached to the inter unit b sir please listen to me very carefully they will do the processing and they will go ahead and send the goods back sir they should send the goods back to whom to the premises means inter b say it should come back to a or it should be sent to a job worker also when you are sending it to job work again from unit b you have to follow the job work ka procedure can i go ahead everyone listen to me very carefully now unit a the importer who is there the importer this is the importer right he should go ahead baba unit a and b both are his only so the importer only should maintain the details tell in relation to transfer of goods to another unit maintain accounts of receipt of goods manufacturing process undertaken waste generated whenever it will and produce the account to the jurisdictional custom officer on demand and after completion of the said process send the process goods back to the premises means you should go ahead and maintain the account that's the people the importer will maintain the accounts relating to what what are the goods sent what was the manufacturing process undertaken what are the goods waste which was generated are we clear everyone and he should produce the accounts on demand and sir after completion of the process send the process goods back to the premises or to a job worker for carrying out the remaining process it means baba this importer is the owner of this premises also right so he should send it back to the inter unit number 1 or he can send it for job work also is my procedure for sending goods for inter unit clear to all of you people this is a new insertion which is there in the rules can we go ahead everyone please come down now people what is the third thing that can be done number 
I am a manufacturer. I can use myself. I am a service provider. I can use myself. I can go ahead and send it for job work. I can go ahead and send it for inter unit transfer. Fourth, last one, which is there is what? Sir, I can go ahead and use it for space. See, this first three which is there that you are using it yourself or you are sending for job work or inter unit is your usage only. But sir, the last one, the next one over here is, sir, procedure for supplying of imported goods to end use recipient. What is end use recipient? I imported mobile phone ka parts. Or people, for an example, I am importing gold. People, gold ke liye, no? Only there are specified agencies who are there who can import gold. Okay. I imported gold from outside India. Now, this gold which is there, I will go ahead and supply it to jewelers who will make gold ka jewelry. Are we clear? Now, when I am going in and supplying to jewelers who will make gold ka jewelry, this is known as what? Specified end use. The end use should be what everyone? Makers of jewelry go, I should go ahead and supply. Then I will get the concessional rate of duty. So, what is that? I have to go ahead and do. People, very simple. Number one, you import the gold. For an example, gold imported. What will you do? You will clear at concessional rate of duty. You are the main importer. You will go ahead and supply it to whom? Specified end use. Then it says, number one, maintain the records of goods supplied to end use recipient during the month and mention the same in your monthly statement IGCR3. Then what will you do? Send the goods for what? End use recipient might be. These are jewelers who wanted the gold. Send it to them. When you are sending people, you need what? Invoice or evable. Gold ka case me, evable is not required. But here, they have not told this. For an example, I imported part. People, you have to keep in line with your GST Act when you are understanding practically. But exam purpose clearly write this only, invoice or evable. Everyone, I imported supposedly mobile phone ka part and I will supply it to pick makers of mobile phone. So, sir, I will get concessional rate of duty when I am sending it to them. First of all, I will maintain my records. Secondly, I will send along with invoice because I am supplying. Supplying ke liye invoice or evable. Actually, it should be invoice and eBay bill and Baba specify the description and quantity in the eBay bill and the invoice. You should specify what is the basically quantity you are going ahead and sending. And now, end use recipient, once he receives the goods, he should, in case of supply for replenishment or export against the supply, the end use recipient, basically, what are the accounts the end use should go ahead, end use user should go ahead and maintain? Replenishment means what? His go down was empty. He has filled his go down. That is known as replenishment. Everyone over here. Maintain accounts of receipt of goods. Sir, what are the goods I have received? Manufacturing process which I am doing. Waste which is generated during such process. This end use recipient has to go ahead and maintain these accounts. And then people, I should also maintain the records. Plus the end use user also should maintain the records. He should produce the records whenever demanded by the jurisdictional custom officer. And produce the relevant details to the importer for fulfillment of the benefit under the notification. It means everyone, whatever records he is going ahead and maintaining, whatever details are basically required by the importer, because the importer has to make sure no, that the end use has been done. So he should go ahead and provide the details as told in the exemption. Produce the relevant details. Relevant details means, sir, I have gone ahead and made this one mobile phone or this item was made out of the raw material received. That details the end use user has to go ahead and provide to whom? To the main importer who is there. Are we clear everyone? People, you just imagine, I am a big importer of mobile phone ka parts. What will I do? I will import the parts and ultimately supply it to many mobile phone manufacturer. Exemption notification is there. If you supply it for using mobile phone, you can import parts at concessional rate of duty. I imported the parts. Ultimately, I supplied it to whom? End user, the end use recipient who will, I will supply it under a invoice plus eBay bill. The goods will not come back. He will go ahead and use it for end use. He will maintain the records, produce the records to the jurisdictional officer when demanded. And if I go ahead, he should go ahead and he will not return the goods to me, but he should provide me the detail. What did I do with your goods? Can I go ahead, everyone? Everyone over here now.
यू नो वट कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी में यू कैन इम्पोर्ट मशीनरीज ऑल्सो फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल देर इज एन एग्जामेशन नोटिफिकेशन विच गोज एड एंड सेज दैट यू कैन गो एड एंड इम्पोर्ट पीपल यू कैन गो एड एंड इम्पोर्ट मशीनरी एंड आउट ऑफ द मशीनरी इफ यू गो एड एंड डू दिस देन यू विल गेट कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल टू मेक कार्स to make cars government told if you import machinery from outside india to make car because government wants to promote make in india exams and notification issued and government told if you import for an example if you import machine and make car over a period of one year then you will get concessional rate of duty i went in and imported machine used it for making car over a period of one year and use done one year over what machine ko i will burn it off after the end use you will clear the machine in the domestic tariff area do you guys agree with me when you are clearing the machine in india what will you do now end use is done now you will start using the machine normally or you will go ahead and use give it to someone else who might want to buy the machine so they are going ahead and telling if after the end use is over sir you went ahead and told make machine buy get machine to india use it for the end use for 3 years that's it after 3 years what to do with the machine you will sell it to someone else what do when you sell it to someone else whatever concession was given to you now you are not using it for end use earlier provisions only were not there last time they introduced the provision that capital goods you can clear it in the domestic tariff area sir whatever the value of the capital goods was there people you have to depreciate it whatever the depreciated value comes on that whatever the concessional rate of duty was given that duty you can pay now you don't have to pay the actual concession which was given to you depreciated value pay you have to calculate the concessional rate of duty and pay sir how to calculate the depreciated value they have gone ahead and told over here can we go ahead and understand very interesting very important from exam point of view they can go ahead and ask a numerical question everyone listen to me very carefully cap clearance of capital goods after having used for specified purpose clearance of capital goods after having used for specified purpose listen you went in and imported capital goods theek hai for an example one machine theek hai machine you cleared at concessional rate of duty now what happened number 2 machine is used for specified purpose over you used it for making cars for over a period of 3 years for an example what was told in the notification you did it after that what to do they are telling number 3 you can clear the machine after using for specified purpose earlier the rules mein this provision only was not there people used to say what do i do with this machine already the end use is done then they are telling you just pay the differential duty don't pay the differential duty for an example you imported 10 crore ka machine on that you had got 15% concession it means 1.5 crore was concession you had got you don't have to pay 1.5 crore now you have to take out the depreciated value of the machine and on the depreciated value you just have to pay what concessional rate for an example today's depreciation value depreciated value of the machine is 2 crore 2 crore pay 15% is how much everyone 30 lakh along with interest you have to pay along with interest 15% from the day you had imported till the date you are making the payment 30 lakh rupees has to be paid along with interest and everyone over here whatever is the value of the capital goods how to depreciate if you use it only for one quarter 4% depreciation for first year 4% 4% 4% 4% second year everyone 3% third year 3 fourth and fifth year 2.5 thereafter 2% it means there is no limitation whenever you clear the capital goods in the domestic tariff area means whenever you clear within india whenever you go ahead and supply it after the specified years you have to go ahead and calculate the depreciated value tell me one thing i went ahead and bought one machine for 1 crore rupees okay everyone i went ahead and got 15 after one year one year i used it for specified use and i am clearing it can you tell me how much depreciation 4 4 4 4 depreciation it means 1 crore pay how much depreciation i'll get 16% it means the value remaining now will be how much 84% it means 84 lakh will be the value of the machine do you guys understand everyone can i go ahead 16% depreciation you have to give and now the value of the machine will be 84 lakh on 84 lakh 15% is how much everyone are you have to pay no what concession you had got 
that concession you have to return. One point twelve point six twelve lakh sixty thousand twelve point six lakh. Okay, everyone, along with interest at the rate of fifteen percent. And people over here now, listen per quarter or part thereof. Ke liye, you should depreciate all this percentage, and you will get the depreciated value. On depreciated value, you have to pay the differential duty along with interest. Remember, in custom, the interest is always fifteen percent per annum. Are we hundred percent clear till here? And everyone over here, no upper limit for such depreciation. Depreciation from the date when the goods come into use, not from the date of import. The appreciation should be from the day the capital goods come into use. You got the capital goods into India on 1st January. You started using from 1st of April. So, depreciation will start from 1st of April. Till the date of clearance, you will have to go ahead and give the depreciation. And everyone, the importer shall have the option to pay voluntarily the duty along with interest and the particulars of such clearance and duty. Where will you mention? IGCR 3 shall be recorded in the monthly statement. Can we go ahead everyone? Everyone, are you guys 100% clear with what is the thought of the government over here? How can you send the goods for job work? How can you go ahead and send the goods for inter-unit? What are the records to be maintained? How can you go ahead and sell the goods for specified end use? And the last one over here, capital goods, how to clear it? Are you guys clear till here everyone? Now, the last one over here. If you don't go ahead, people, you tell me one thing. If you don't go ahead and follow the IGCR rule properly, if you go ahead and do any violation, you should pay the differential duty immediately. If you don't pay, what will they do? Whatever the bond is there, they will invoke and they will take. Bond ke saath guarantee you would have given. They will invoke the bond and take out the money. Failure to perform the intended use or if you don't, people, you did not do the intended use or you did not go ahead and re-export or you did not comply with the condition of the IGCR. But what is the condition? You have to maintain record. You have to furnish the detail. If you don't do it or where payment is not made or short paid, might be differential duty you have to pay. You did not pay only or you short paid, then your jurisdictional AC or DC shall initiate recovery proceeding. How will he recover the money, everyone? He will invoke the bond of the amount as under people number one in case a notification that provides for duty exemption people there was an exemption notification there was an exemption notification which had given 15 percent duty ka exemption what will he recover the differential duty along with interest so differential duty along with interest from the date of import till the date of payment of the entire differential duty basically till the date of recovery he will go ahead and recover along with interest now, there was an exemption notification which did not, people, there was an exemption notification which did not give you duty ka exemption. Might be it went ahead and gave you any other benefit. They went ahead and told, if you go ahead and follow IGCR rule, you will get this benefit from the government. But it was not giving you any duty ka concession. Now, if you go ahead and avail the benefit of the exemption notification, which was not giving you what? Duty exemption was not given, other benefit was given. Might be other non-monetary benefit was given by the government. You went ahead and took the benefit of the exemption notification and then you violated. Now, what money they will recover? I'll tell you, there was no differential duty only. I had paid the full duty. But there was other benefits which I was receiving from the government if I was following IGCR rules. So, I was following the IGCR rule, but I did some violation. Now, what will they recover from you? Differential duty is not there. So, in that scenario, it says, in case where a notification is other than other than the one which provides what exemption benefit might be any other benefit was provided you have to pay an amount equal to the accessible value of the imported goods what goods you had imported what was the accessible value the transaction value or the tariff value of the goods that amount so that amount you have to go ahead and pay if you do the while generally it is the number one only number two is very rare can I go ahead, everyone? The next one over here is, sir, rule number 12, penalty. The importer, people listen. First of all, so they will recover from you differential duty along with interest at the rate of 15%. Secondly, they are telling over here, the importer or a job worker who contravenes any of the provision of these rules shall be liable 
to a penalty to the extent of rupees x how much is the penalty everyone if you do any violation of the rules 2 lakh rupees ka penalty is there are we clear everyone can we go ahead people in my opinion from exam point of view they can go ahead and give you the value of the capital goods and they can tell you this was the differential duty which was there ignore interest calculation they might tell you and tell you what is the differential duty which you have to pay find the depreciated value and on that multiply the concessional rate of duty and tell this is this much is the amount sir if you have to pay interest then you have to pay interest from which date from the day capital goods had come into use till the date you are making the payment you have to pay interest at the rate of 15% there can be a small question on this please be very careful they can ask you this is also important from exam point of view why sir they can go ahead and tell you that sir whenever you are going ahead and sending the goods for specified end use what is the procedure to be followed they can also go ahead and ask you in the exam how inter unit transfers will be made what is the procedure they can ask you about job work also when you are sending it for job work what is the procedure to be followed people i have told you 1 2 and 3 right and come and sir then they can go ahead and tell you what are the accounts to be maintained by a person when he is going ahead and importing at concessional rate of duty they can also go ahead and ask you what is the one time information that is to be provided when you are going ahead and importing at concessional rate of duty these are some of the question which they can go ahead and ask people i hope you guys enjoyed the chapter i will go ahead and close my discussion on the chapter of people customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or specified end use 2000 and Congratulations people done